That's right. Welcome in. Oh, my voice is coming back. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a spring football is over. Now what? Now what? <laughs> Edition of the Always Iris Show. It's going to be a long summer. It's going to be a long summer, people, and I am not looking forward to it. Welcome in. Welcome back. As always, you can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps Yanni Boy out as well. Those notifications on. You know why. That way you alerted every time a new episode drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish. Or at Always Irish. Inc. Emails. Always Irish. Andy at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can get it if you don't want to see my face. I certainly don't blame you to call in lines. You know them. 312 988 you dialed up, tell Uncle Johnny all oh, you've heard and seen. Instagram, Facebook, Always Irish Inc. USA Today, Irish Wire. You can read all about it there. Patreon.com, a slash Always Irish. Former captain, leading tackler, Mike Goolsby. Spent some quality time with him the last few days. It's been a riot, man. He's been running all over. I've been running all over. It's It's been a, a productive last weekend you know like including third from thursday all the way through just a lot of people to meet a lot of stuff to do people to talk to all having to do with notre dame it's a beautiful thing folks beautiful thing so here's the thing i'm sitting here struggling with the reality that notre dame football doesn't get cranked up again until august now and I go through this every year, like you get through the season and then you had all those months in this season. You can like kind of deal with the right when it's over because you had football for so long, it could like tide you over. Then you get an itch for it again. And then you get, you get that itch, then spring ball starts. And then you ride the crescendo up again and you get uh, the fan bases, ours and everybody else, you get cranked up. And then after blue and gold, the realization hits you. Oh man, this is gonna be a long summer, and we don't have no we don't have no football till August. Now we don't, and I. It's not ideal, especially when you love baseball, and it used to be your distraction to knock days off the calendar of the summer, winding into Notre Dame football. When you're a White Sox fan, and it's the worst baseball team there's ever been, you don't have that in the summer either. So it's going to be a long summer for Johnny boy over here without any, really any other sports distractions to, to get me off the Notre Dame kick. It's not ideal. It's going to be a long summer. So the question now is what comes next for this program? And I don't mean what is the year look like in 24? What's our record? Do we make the expanded playoff and, and a host of playoff game? And no, 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 no. I'm talking about between now and then. Not then. I'm talking about between now and then, right? And it's a really interesting question because there's a lot of things going on and Notre Dame's changing in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things to monitor. So that's, The question, what comes next? Because it's going to be a long, humid, dragging on summer that's never going to end. That's what it's going to feel like. So what are we looking at here? Number one, the portal. That's number one. You're looking at the portal. In and out. Who's coming to Notre Dame? Who's leaving Notre Dame? Again, it is funny. Who was it? I think it was Dr. John on my live chat. Somebody said, I don't think God, I think it was Dr. John. And he said, uh, God must not be a Notre Dame fan because every time we have a player leave the program, they tweet out, I've been doing a lot of praying about this and God told me to leave Notre Dame. Like it is, it is ironic to me that the place is like kind of focused around God and religion and spirituality and all that. And every time one of these guys prays on it, God tells them to leave Notre Dame. There is some irony in that. Um, And you know what else too? I'll say it here. Sometimes I think some of these guys start mentioning the God stuff to kind of soften the blow. 
figuring like if I mention God helped with this, they they won't come at me on Twitter for leaving their team or something. They're, I'm convinced there's something to that sometimes. That you know the, the home fan base isn't going to like you leaving and, and you're hoping if you put that Jesus bit in there, it'll soften the blow. People will, will think twice before coming at you that hard for leaving. I'm convinced that's a thing. But you got to check that portal. Number one, are all these quarterbacks staying? I don't know, but you about to find out. So that's number one. Like, forget the other moving parts and whatever else. Like, that's the first thing I'm interested in is, are all these quarterbacks staying? And what what's the deal? Does Notre Dame try to pick up guys? How many guys leave Notre Dame? It happens every It's coming and going. Who's leaving? Why? And who's coming in? That's number one. Number two, what's next? Hopefully, good recruiting news, right? Like, that's one. Let's be honest. From now till the first week of August. That's pretty much all you're getting as far as Notre Dame news, unless somebody else gets hurt or arrested. That's that's the only, that's it. The only other thing you're going to hear about is recruiting till that camp cranks up in August. And summer usually does have some of the a couple couple different couple week windows where Notre Dame tends to hit when it unless I'm forgetting June one of them like the, it times out where there's a couple different segments of the summer where Notre Dame hits. So you're looking at recruiting, 25 and 26 recruiting. Thirdly, healing. Healing. Man, there's so many guys dinged up. Dinged up, nicked up, not 100%. Now is the time to have your brain and your mind in the playbook and your body getting healthy. Because Notre Dame had a lot of guys like more than I'm comfortable with. It was, what is it, 16, 17, something like that, out of blue and gold. There's two ways to look at that. Number one is, well, John, I don't see no real games on the schedule for another bunch of months. I'm glad it's happening now. I understand that perspective. Um, and it's like, just be glad it's happening now. And this isn't like, in, in, and it's spring camp and not fall camp, which means we have games to play and guys aren't going to be able to play. So I totally understand it's much better now than then. But you know what's better than that? Not having it be this big of an issue at all. And not with some of your most important players you're going to rely on to do anything good next year. And... <clears throat> This isn't meant to be like a shot or insulting or whatever. But when I know you're coming off an injury, then I'm worried about you having another injury because it's in my head. Are you telling me if Riley Leonard comes into August healthy and they run with him as the starter in the back of your head every game you watch, you ain't worried about that ankle cracking loose? Because I'm going to be just because there's a tedious ominous history there so and you could say john you're overreacting you all you do is worry or whatever yeah you're damn right that's why my airline's messed up why do you think my airline's jacked up notre dame worry and brian kelly but those were one and the same for over a decade so it kind of counts So healing, man, you got to get these guys right. And they need to be fully locked and loaded and not wearing green jersey or red jerseys. And nobody and everybody's on a scooter and a a wheelchair and crutches coming into into campus next in August. No, man, get out the head in the playbook, body in the training area, whatever, therapy, whatever you got to do. In today's fast-paced digital age, seamless and secure transactions for your business aren't a luxury. They're an absolute necessity. That's where your friends at Paisley step in. Paisley's in the business of making your business run smoother, not just as a payment processor. 
but as a true partner in your success and growth. Paisley's platform is intuitive, the fees are transparent, security ironclad, processing instant, and the support team is unmatched. If you're looking to take your business to the next level anywhere in the United States, call one of the all-stars of Always Irish Radio, Chicago's very own Tom Frawley at 773-332-7742 or email him tom at paisleypartners.com for a personalized payment processing consultation addressing your unique business needs. And be sure to tell them Always Irish sent you. Four, number four, coaches. And I know this is standard procedure or whatever, but this is of extra import and F emphasis to me, this cycle. They must prepare an exact and a very detailed plan for what the first day of fall camp is going to look like, especially on the offense especially on the offense. I have been harping on this and it's the theme of the summer. The offense is very much a work in progress. I feel in the blue and gold game, you can see the direction and the kindling and the vision that they want to go down, like the kindling of that, the starting of that. It's nowhere near where it needs to be. And I'm not arguing that it should be or whatever, like with the quarterback out that you wanted to run with and all that, like it's just not where it needs to be. Then you add in Mike Denbrock's new, so there's a lot of new things going on and to learn and different ways to do things, whatever. To me, the parts of the team overall I'm most worried about next year on the field or on offense. It ain't nothing on defense. You go, oh, John, you're always worried about us getting enough pressure on the quarterback on defense. You talk about that all the time as the cherries on top. Those, yeah, it's a big priority. Nowhere near the worry I have about Notre Dame's offensive line. And I still, I don't trust that wide receiver group. You out of your mind? Prove it. Prove it. So you have. All summer, the dog days, when that sun goes down at nine o'clock at night, like the dog, lazy, lazy days of summer, you have no football, no football, no football, no football, no football. Then boom, the beginning of August camp hits and it's off to the races. Turbo charge. You got what? Three weeks to get everything together. Then that next week, you're in game prep to get ready to go play a and That offense has a lot to sort out and not a lot of time to do it when we reconnect in August. So that's my big thing. It's a time crunch that offense is going to be in come August. Here's the good news though. The good news is Mike Denbrock's up for this kind of challenge. Mike Denbrock is absolutely up for this sort of challenge. A guy with his skins on the wall, and I love last year, Heisman winner, you know, number one scoring offense. John, we don't have that kind of talent. Don't expect that. I know, I know, I know. But all his tenure and all those old war wounds and the skins on the wall, man, Mike Denbrock is uniquely built to be able to position and navigate Notre Dame where they need to be to get as much done in those first few weeks camp as possible. But that's my big thing. You better have a really tight plan because there's so much to figure out with is Ryder Leonard fully healthy. If he is, are we doing a quarterback competition? Are we over that? And if he's healthy, he's the one because we can't afford to give up reps the other way. And we just, that's what we're doing. And then we got to get Riley Leonard comfortable with his own thing. Then we got to get him integrated with the team and get that all going at the same time. How are those wide receivers? Are they healthy? Are they reliable? Can they get open? Can they hold on the ball? What are we doing? Oh, by the way, I'm terrified about Notre Dame's offensive line. Bro. Bro. That's a lot. That's a lot of worry to jam into three weeks of August. Okay. Those are a lot of big items. Um, And again, maybe you don't have all of these anxieties that I have 
or maybe you don't have them to the extent that I have. And if, and if that's the case, they say, congratulations for you. Um, but I'm going to worry about that offensive line every single day of the summer leading into Texas A&M. It ain't going to be one day this summer, rest of spring and summer, that I do not spend some time playing in my mind what could happen at A&M if that O-line is not ready for the big leagues. I am not here for it, you guys. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You're all line you, remember? I get told on Twitter every day, everybody's so proud of it. You're all line you. Run some guys out there that can block for you. It ain't that much to ask. You don't get to have it both ways. If you're all line you, that's got to be freaking always, not sometimes. And I would argue the only times that it applies is against lower level opponents. So you got a lot to figure out. You got a lot to figure out. Not a lot of time to do it. So when I look at what comes next, you're looking at the portal, you're looking at recruiting, you're looking at getting your guys healthy. You're looking at putting in the plan of what August is going to look like, which is of utmost significance, given how much work that offense must do to be prepared to be the A&M. And then number five, what are we going to do? Us, me, you, I can only speak for me. I'm just going to worry about it every day. That's all. Like, I don't know what else there is for us to do the rest of the summer. I'm just going to sit here and worry about it. Why? I don't know why. It's just the way I'm wired. Why do you think I'm so skinny, man? I stress the calories right out of my bloodstream. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Irish anxiety and Irish angst are the real deal. There's a lot of pressure on Marcus in year three around this program and everything that's expected taking a jump up. You absolutely must be a part of this playoff field. Or it's going to be a huge freaking problem. So there's a lot on the damn line. So let's buckle up. Because it's just going to be a long, hot, sweaty wait for Irish football again. And I got these anxieties. But you know what? We'll all get through it together as we do all things here. We'll get through it together. We'll pass the time. We'll analyze everything every which way. So as I wrap up, I'll ask the, the group this. What else is on your radar? What else is on your radar that isn't on mine as far as what comes next in the interim from where we are now until we rejoin camp in August? What other priorities should the staff have that they're tending to or that the players need to do that I do not have on my list? Let me know. Have a good one.